Hello and welcome to the third annual Cabernet Day celebration here at Flora Springs Winery. We are here in the beautiful room in downtown St. Helena. I am your host, Sarah Elliman from Cellar Pass, and I am joined today with Matt Strayer from Flora Springs, the uh, retail room host extraordinaire, and Richard Tiedman, their regional national sales manager. Thank you both for being here today. Our pleasure. Thank you. We will be uh, tasting three amazing Cabernets. Uh, all from the Flora Springs brand. We have Grace Hoffman, known as Cellar Mistress. We also have Charlie, and I'm going to botch your last name, I'm really sorry, so I think it's Artra Ola. <laughs> and E. Maxine Lee, who's joining us all the way from Atlanta, Georgia today, so we want to say thank you so much for joining us. So we'll be tasting these three different Cabernets, as I said, and they will be paired with these lovely, lovely tasty bites, I'm not sure if you can see these, that have been prepared by the Flora Springs Winery Chef and expertly paired with each wine. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit about Flora Springs and the wines we are trying today. Uh, Richard, do you want to just give us a quick overview of what we're going to be tasting? You bet. Well you have, you're tasting three Cabernets, but uh, one is what we call our entry-level Cabernet, but it's a blend of three different AVAs, which is a really nice Cabernet, uh, some nice dark berry flavors. Uh, we're, then we're going to venture over to Oakville, and we're going to taste one of our single vineyard wines uh, called uh, Holy Smoke Vineyard, which I'm a big fan of. And then we're going to trek over kind of through the valley and check out uh, Trilogy, which is a blend of uh, Cabernet Merlot and actually Malbec, this vintage but the vintage changes every year. So we're tasting three wines from three different uh, kind of AVAs here in Napa Valley, but uh, kind of excited to do this tasting as well. This is very exciting. We are also joined today by our entire panel, if you want to take a look around the room, of local wine industry experts and, uh, you know, our general wine peeps. So we're excited that everyone is here. So thank you all for joining us. Some have been here for uh, Chardonnay Day. If you joined us for that, you'll recognize some of these faces and voices. And so, to get this party started, we are going to move right on into the 2009 Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. Matt, would you take us through the tasting on this one? All right, let's go. Take your weapon. All right, cheers. 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 So Matt, this is a 100% Cabernet, right? 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, and uh, it's blended from a few different vineyards. Um, we've got uh, multiple different vineyards of sites for our Cabernet Sauvignon. This comes from uh, St. Helena, Rutherford, and Oakville. Um, so 100% Cab, but just a blend from three different AVAs. So. Mm. And this is also um, one that sees a couple of different types of oak. Uh, so about 72% um, new, or excuse me, 72% French oak, uh, the rest being American oak, and 60% uh, of that is new. Um, so as Richard said earlier, uh, this is our introductory one, and uh, for me, I noticed that the tannins are relatively soft for an 09. Yeah. It's, it's a really well-balanced wine. Um, you said there's two different oaks um, used mm -hmm. in the barrels. Can you tell me a little bit why you guys use two different oak types? Uh, we get different flavor profiles from uh, American versus French oak. Um, American oak, uh, some of the indicators that I can sometimes pick out are coconut, dill, um, and then you get maybe a little bit softer style of uh, baking spice and vanilla, butterscotch um, with both, but American oak for me really seems to kind of jump out of the glass at you. So, oh, wow, that's yeah. very cool. Uh, so our tasty little tidbit bite here that has been so expertly paired is a, doo -doo -doo, what do we got here? We got the grilled mushroom, and I don't know if you can see this, but this is truly incredible. You gotta check this out. Grilled mushroom with an onion and Cabernet marmalade, topped with a porcini creme fraiche and garnished with fresh chive. It is truly amazing. So we're gonna give this a shot here and then try it with our wines and uh, see how the flavors work out. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is incredible. Mm. So I think what we're looking at here is, you know, you typically think of a Cabernet 
pairing with you know steak and beef and you know, all these very heavy flavors I think everyone would agree and this is a really unique um, take on a pairing because not everyone understands that you can have a non-meat dish that pairs very well with the Cabernet and this was a great example I know that the um, the creme fraiche really balanced out those tannins mm -hmm. they're already soft but that's just neutralized them uh, what, what did you think out of it Richard? Well one of the characteristics a lot of us get when we're drinking Cabernet is, oh, it's, it's bold, it kind of tastes a little bit like the forest floor. Well, where do the mushrooms come from? The forest floor. <laughs> the forest floor, so uh, I can see what uh, you know our chef did right here. This is a really nice pairing because, as Matt had mentioned, the tannins in the, the 09 Cabernet are really grainy and soft. So what she did with the creme fraiche, it kind of accentuated a both both uh, avenues and really really is a, a nice pairing you a lot of times creme fraiche can be the tartness can over get a little overbearing on the cabernet but it's a really nice pairing absolutely what do you think sean i'm absolutely loving what you just uh direction you Speak took loud. with the portobello um there's so much beautiful earthiness mm -hmm. in cabernet um, and accentuating that with the food actually lets a lot of the great fruit characteristics. Um, to me, it's just now just jumping out at you. There is so much red fruit in this wine that's sure. just popping. Um, that was there when we first tasted it, but now that you bring in the food, sure. it's explosive. I mean, it's about as red as this napkin you've got exactly. going on right now. Yes, sir. Really it's just incredible. I think you also get, uh, uh, you know, we talked about pairing this with steak, all the cabs, you know, something big, something meaty. Uh, well, I think this is also a good example of you get that earth floor, but um, that earthiness, but you also get some meatiness from the mushroom too. So you can, you don't have to be a meat eater, you can be a vegetarian and still get that meatiness that pairs well with the Cabernet from the mushroom. Um, so it's Absolutely. Really I, I have to say, I am really enjoying this Cabernet. It's uh, mm -hmm. such an approachable wine to drink right now. And, uh, and Marissa, say hi Marissa, is our expert food pairer here at Flora Springs. So we will be getting back to her in a few minutes, probably coming around to the next pairing. I'll put her on the spot in a moment. Uh, so t uh, I can see why this 2009 was sold out immediately. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's an easy drinking wine, incredible. Uh, I know everyone at home, you're sipping this right now, you're lucky. Um, but I did hear a little rumor that there are some 375s available here at the room, but you have to act now and call the room. Uh, the number should be flashing on the bottom of your screen, just kidding. Uh, but we will give you that number shortly so you can uh, get what's left of the 375s. I highly recommend it. Uh, any other comments down there? What do you think, uh, table uh, gatherers to my left? <laughs> I think we would just have to call, go along with what you said and the, the, the meatiness of a vegetable with a fabulous Cabernet is wonderful. Mm, well, cheers. This is definitely a, a good one. Not bad for your uh, entry level mm -hmm. Cabernet. <laughs> I, I would say this uh, tops the uh, Sarah's wine picks for uh, Monday through Thursday wine for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we will be moving on here to the trilogy. And this is a very, very, very special wine. Uh, not only is it Flora's 100th birthday this year, which I know is a big deal. I don't know how many of us uh, will make it to 100, so uh, congratulations, Flora. Uh, but this is also the 25th anniversary of the trilogy itself. And uh, not many people know this, but the trilogy was one of the very first California Meritage wines um, in, in the collection. So it's got some really great history. And through Flora Springs' consistency and absolute excellence of quality, it has become their flagship wine. But I have a question, and this is going to go to Richard, see if he can answer it. What is a Meritage? Well, that's a, that's a great question. When we first formed the Meritage Society in, in 1984, you know, we were kind of playing on the Bordeaux style of wine, but we couldn't use the word Bordeaux. Right. So what, uh, what we decided to come up with was the word Meritage, and it's kind of a, it's, it's a play on words. It's, it's more about, you know, pairing the heritage of what we're doing here in Napa Valley. Some people would say, "Oh, you're marrying the two words together," but uh, we're, you know, we're we're actually marrying fruit together. And uh, one thing that we can't forget to to mention is uh, in 2012, uh, Flora Springs was recently voted by Napa Valley Grape Growers Association as a Grape Grower of the Year. Wow! So that is a huge honor. That is incredible. Uh, it, it, 
to be voted by your peers. Yeah. So once again, being a, a family-owned winery and selling grapes who we sell to, uh, this is just one of uh, uh, the amazing wines that we make, but we, we pay a lot of attention to this wine. And I could talk about it, and I'm gonna pass it over to Matt and let yeah, him have some sure, fun with it too, because sure. we, we both want to talk so oh, yeah. much about yeah, this Yeah, this wine. is such a it's special wine, and um, yeah, I'm definitely feeling very uh, spoiled today being able to sample it here with you guys. So Matt, what, could you tell us a little bit about the wine sure. itself? Sure, there's, uh, like Richard said, there's so much to say about this wine. There's a reason mm -hmm. it's our flagship uh, Bordeaux style blend, one of the first Meritage wines in California. Um, the blend changes from year to year, but uh, it was originally called wow. Trilogy because they used a blend of a third Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, a third Cab Franc, and a third Merlot. So the blend now changes up from year to year, but they still try to take in three Bordeaux varietals. Um, so this vintage is 81% Cabernet Sauvignon, 14% Merlot, and 5% Malbec. Uh, and it spends uh, 21 months in all new French oak. So uh, this is a great one to sit down in your cellar if you'd like. It only gets better with time, oh, but it tastes really great right now. So Yeah, it, it's drinking yeah. very well. That you Definitely it's going to age beautifully over the next 10, 15 years mm -hmm. or so, for sure. And Marissa, can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to be tasting? We're going to be tasting the Trilogy with our flourless chocolate cake. Ooh. Uh, it's a mini cake, and it's also topped with our Trilogy mixed duck berry coulis, and it's garnished with a fresh raspberry. I think that the uh, dark berry mouthfeel that you get with the wine pairs very nicely with this dessert. It's also gluten free for those who are gluten free, so it kind of gives you another option of what you can pair with our calves outside of steak in your traditional fare. So, so we're already vegetarian and gluten free so far. Exactly. This is incredible. Doing a whole who knew? Gamut, a whole gamut of your dietary needs. It's fantastic. Well, thank you so much. All right, we're going to give this a, a little taste here, uh, share with the audience at home what we're sampling here. You got to check this out. These little cakes are absolutely beautiful. I want to serve these at my next uh, party for sure. Look at that. They're gorgeous. Okay. Now on with the tasting. Oh my goodness, that is incredible, Marissa. Well done. <laughs> yeah, it really brings out the um, great uh, like milk chocolate, dark chocolate that you find in this wine. Oh. Uh, and then the raspberry, blackberry, uh, it, that totally brings out the berries in this one. As well. Oh yeah, it's, it's so, so bright and beautiful. I mean, you know, here's a wine that you know you would put on your you know, probably your you know dinner table Christmas time. You know, it's a very special wine, and um, you're thinking your entrees, and this is you know the main event. But honestly, this could go right into dessert so easily. So well, the Merlot in this in this wine, each vintage, it, we add the Merlot because it brings out the red berry flavors. The, the Cabernet, whether it's the Malbec or Cab Franc, are bringing bringing in the darker berry flavors. Yeah. So with that with that raspberry and a little coulis, you can the Merlot is really battling with that. Like I want to show myself, but the dessert is also saying, well, I'm right here too. Right. So it, it's it's really nice and flourless is what makes that absolutely it's not so sweet where it might overpower. You know, if you were using a, a type of a, a pudding to make that cake. Oh, it's that's incredible. Really you nice. just get the pure essence of the chocolate and the berries. And um, yeah, I think mint would also do very well with this wine. I think, you know, if you just add a little bit of that, uh, whether it's in dessert or uh, I'm just thinking like a lamb, roast lamb with like a garlic mint uh, rub would be fantastic. Yeah, Duck. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This that is would one be incredible. great on its own. Though. Yeah, exactly. It's like you said, you could have this for your main meal, you can have it beforehand, but if you have it for your main course, maybe you've got, you know, a quarter bottle left of your trilogy, don't have anything like this delicious for dessert, bring out a little bit of dark chocolate, you've got your dessert. Yeah, nib right nibble so. some chocolate on the yeah. porch on a Saturday night. Could, couldn't be perfect, more perfect than that. Uh, Sean, what do you think about this one? Both with the the, uh, the flowers, chocolate cake, and the wine, uh, this is really just about balance. You've got so many different beautiful components on here. You've got the density of the actual tort. You've got that nice, soft juiciness of the coulis, and then you've got that bright snap of the raspberry. And every single one of those components exists in this one. Absolutely. It's absolutely wonderful. Yep. And what's so unique, I mean, I know the audience at home is maybe not exactly tasting what we're tasting today, but if you were to make a flourless um, chocolate tort or something similar with a fresh berry um, 
uh, Kuli, you would be tasting every berry, the blueberry, the raspberry. I mean, it's just, it pops and it's, it's right there at the top of your tongue. You're just like, wow, it's, um, it's truly a beautiful wine. So I highly recommend uh, the chocolate and the berries, as well as uh, we were talking about some of the, uh, the richer flavors of lamb, braised short ribs. I mean, this is a, uh, a very versatile wine. It's, it's impressive, truly. Any other thoughts or questions around here, team? No? All right. Do we have any questions from our online audience? As I'm hearing delicious come around the table. What's our deliciousness? So we have some questions we're going to answer here now before we move on to uh, contestant number three. So we have a question. What is going on in the vineyards this time of year? Well, you know what? That is an excellent question uh, and good timing. Harvest has just kicked off for uh, many of the wineries. I know a couple of weeks ago it was a lot of sparkling wine was coming in and now we're just starting to see some Sauvignon Blanc I hear coming into Sonoma County and possibly in Napa as well. But um, I heard just uh, next door they just brought in some fruit uh, on Monday as a matter of fact. So Matt, you want to give us a little tour of what may be going on here at Flores Springs? Yeah, Brains, so uh, we should be harvesting our Sauvignon Blanc here soon. That'll be the first one. Um, like you said, the sparklers, they started I think a week or two yeah, ago. Yeah, they were a little early, um, as so, always. Yeah, you don't need as much sugar in those. You need that <laughs> nice crisp acidity. Um, so that's why you'll harvest those earlier, the Chardonnays, that kind of thing, to go in the sparkling wine, um, where we need just a little bit more sugar development. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll be starting up and then Non-stop at that point. Exactly. And a lot of excitement in the valley. So <laughs> This is probably the most exciting time of the year here in the valley. I don't know if you've ever been able to enjoy uh, one of the wine countries during harvest, but there's such an energy and magic that is to be experienced. And, you know, there's something going on out all hours of the day. God bless the seller teams for what they do. Um, it, that is a... Uh, truly a feat of uh, humankind because they work around the clock uh, forever. And of course, you can check out all of the wineries and what the harvest activities are on Cellar Pass. Shameless plug. All right, <laughs> so shall we move on to the very interestingly named Holy Smoke Vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon. Now this one, I mean, I just like the name. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> what's not to like about something called Holy Smoke? That's Holy just very smoke. cool. Uh, but this is, I mean, it's, it, you can tell it's just a little darker. Um, and this is a truly special wine. This is one of the single vineyard wines that Flora Springs produces. So it's part of a very um, elite collection that they have here. And uh, it's also 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. I've done my little bit of homework here. And it's from my notes from my uh, pre-tasting yesterday, haha. -ha. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I hear it hails from one of the younger of the single vineyard mm -hmm. properties uh, out of Oakville, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, see, good note taking. Got it, yeah. All right, <laughs> bam. All right, so tell us a little bit about it. I'm actually gonna turn this one to Richard. Well, what, what's fun about this one, I just wanna jump back to that last question of what's going on in the vineyard right now. Oh, yes. what's, what's the most unique thing about 2012 is what happened in 2011. 2011 was the coldest summer in Napa Valley in 40 years. San Diego, San Francisco, we all experienced a very cool summer for, for Californians as far as agriculture. The difference between 2011 and 2012 is a total reversal. 2012 is shaping up to possibly be a vintage of, of a lifetime. Uh, we've already gone through the vineyards. I work in the vineyards myself and done a lot of different thinning. Uh, so what you see on the vine right now is what we're going to be bringing in. And if you walk into a vineyard, there is a lot of oh, vigor. The clusters are of, gorgeous right now. But Amazing. What you see is everything in symmetry. You're not seeing a whole lot of difference. Uh, shatter, one of the right. ladies mentioned that earlier today. Uh, you're seeing a, a lot of depth and vigor and so we're really excited so the cabernet we're in the vineyard on saturday doing some sugar readings it's still really early for this far up in the valley and the south, southern part of the valley we are starting to look at uh, some pinot noirs and obviously Fantastic. some some chardonnays and then we'll jump over to oakville and, and this vineyard is uh this vineyard's just a lot of fun uh, i'm a i'm a part of our oakville uh committee so i go to the tastings I taste all Oakville wines for 15 years. Oh, for you, our you poor company. soul. I, my, so we, my heart just goes out to you. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to taste Screaming Eagle, Harland, <laughs> Olive Olly, and those types of wines, but then taste this wine side by side in blind tastings or in comparative tastings. And this wine, uh, you'll hear other wineries talk about wow, 
what's going on in this block and this particular this particular vintage only 370 plus cases produced so not not a wow. whole lot of wine so a lot of concentration in the wine you're you're getting just a lot of dark berry flavors but once again it's kind of the, the flora springs uh mark the tannins are in check Oh, indeed. They're, yeah. they're, they're, it's not a, a astringent finish system. But really nice dark berry flavors, and the oak also, as uh, Matt had mentioned, is a uh, you know uh, French oak, about 22 months on oak, um, and it's just a very balanced cab. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, it's still a little young, uh, but you know, of course, this is what you expect from you know such a prime cabernet. 2001 was the first vintage, mm. so relatively new. And that first vintage, we did a tasting. Mm. Uh, I was at, I did the tasting for us. It was a Bricks restaurant, and people were coming up, and they were, "Wow, what is this wine?" And the vines were only four years old. Oh, just a baby. So, so exactly. So these vines now are still only a dozen years old, and you can see the tannins are kind of in check. Yeah. You know, they want to explode, but they're not there they're, yet. They're just not quite there. What do you think, Sean? Think you know, five the years. This is going to be no, this pretty is, phenomenal. Not you, that it isn't already. You can see this wine almost developing yeah. um, and not just in the glass because it is. I mean, yeah. uh, I've been tasting this wine. I, I cheated. I went ahead earlier and kind of looked at the wines and have now been going back, back as we're going into the different uh, pairings and it's developing in the glass. But you can almost see the, the idea of the wine also developing. You know, we're having worked with a lot of younger vines and seeing how vineyards develop. You can see that this is coming out of a younger vineyard, but with that, there is so much potential. Sure. There is so much room that that, that vineyard is going to, you know, develop, and it's going to get those roots deep into the soil. It's like watching your it's child grow. All that you beautiful, bet. beautiful Oakville. Sure. Oh my gosh, this, sure. this wine, which is amazing right now, I. I I'm scared to see how awesome no. it's going to yeah, be. It's, 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 Five, a, ten. it's a lot of fun working with this wine to see it from its infancy and, and kind of growing. I would be like maybe an infant to a teenager. Right. And with the, we, we would love to see where kind it's Kind of in a going, tween but, right now. But it's really <laughs> fun to see how you can get some unique flavors out of, of, out of younger vines. Well, this definitely is proof that you, you can get an amazing Cabernet um, with such depth and complexity out of a young vine. So, you know, don't be, a sh don't be a sh scared to try it. I mean, if you see something that's like, oh, it's only five years old or six years old, go for it because when it's, when it's this good, it's worth it. Well, There's well, no doubt. What we've learned in Napa Valley, we're, we're just not like we might have did a generation ago throwing something in the ground because it was an Oakville. We're, we're studying the soil. We're finding out what that soil has the for nutrients. The content, nutrient. how it's going to We're finding work. out what rootstock, what clone works. So you can actually get you know some amazing so you're flavors. saying these are like designer vineyards well <laughs> more or less <laughs> no peds <laughs> no no <laughs> not like that but yes of course you can absolutely this is wonderful i mean it's just when it hit your tongue it's like bam you know there it is you know this is an incredible one of the ladies wine. down here karen you know you have a you're a sharp wine lady what do you think of the wine um trilogy has always been one of my favorite cabernet blends from napa valley so i'm always happy to drink that one so that, that out of these three is definitely my favorite. Excellent. So Karen's favoring the trilogy she over over the other three and uh, think, Kathy. I think that's um, a consensus. Oh. We just, we just had that conversation. So, so the uh, left side over here <laughs> is the uh, trilogy <laughs> side. No, not necessarily. Oh, <laughs> odd man <laughs> out. <Yeah. laughs> I think you have to sell three bottles of the trilogy at a time. Is that right? I mean, you have to sell three <laughs> bottles of trilogy at a time. Right, something like that. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> So this one, this Holy Smoke is, is very unique. So um, back to the name though, we were talking about that a little bit yesterday. Sure. Um, so how did Holy Smoke get its name? Well, Holy Smoke, it's a uh, name for the fog that uh, you find in Napa Valley. Um, the coastal influence um, moves up in the evening. You can get a huge temperature difference. Anybody who lives in the valley knows. Oh, yeah. It can be 50 degrees at night in the evening or cooler. It can be 90 degrees plus during the day. Yeah, Napa uh, Valley is a uh, key for layering. Yeah. You start with tank tops, t-shirts, all the way up to <laughs> yeah. sweatshirts, parkas occasionally, exactly. and you just peel down throughout the day. It's, uh, it's it pretty interesting. Huge temperature <laughs> and that affects the grapes. Um, this is a world-class region, especially Oakville, for growing Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, and so it's named for that uh, fog that will lift off in the morning uh, and burn off. It looks like smoke lifting off the vineyards. It's kind of um, gets a little wispy and yeah, kind of curly exactly. as it burns off in the morning. Mm -hmm. It's right, like truly beautiful. It's holy smoke because 
um, it really is special. Without that cooling temperature, we wouldn't be able to grow such great Cabernet Sauvignon because capping so hot during the day it needs that uh, evening cooling just to have a little time yeah. off, you know. So absolutely, um, and that's one of the unique things about the Napa Valley specifically is that we do get this cooling trend every evening. Uh, and you know, you go further south, it's even more pronounced. But this is. Truly an amazing Cabernet. So I hope uh, all you folks online are enjoying this as much as we are. Um, do we have any more questions? I know we had a few coming in here. What are the main differences between the three different wines? And I, you know, that is a good question. And this is something that I know that even I was making comment to yesterday is, uh, especially with the first two, the Trilogy and the 09 Cabernet Sauvignon, the, the flavor profiles are very similar um, in many ways. And I know that comes from the style, of course, of how it's made and you know, being the consist consistency of Flora Springs wine making style in general, but, um, and of course being all 2009, so there's gonna be some uh, telltale signs that they have all come from the same vintage. Uh, but, you know, Matt, maybe you can give us a little pointer on sure. some of the, the subtle differences that you're able to point out here, or even the big Let's differences. See, I know yeah. the Holy Smoke is, is completely different. It is. So, um, well, the trilogy, the big difference there, it's a blending. Um, technically, you could call it a Cabernet Sauvignon because it's 81% Cab. Um, but really, the blending of the Merlot and the Malbec gives you a, a completely different uh, flavor profile and mouthfeel. Um, you're having the some of its parts creating something special uh, that you don't get from just a single vineyard cab or yeah. like a Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. But um, I would say the tannins are a little bit softer in the Napa Valley cab uh, compared to the Holy Smoke, mm -hmm. which is big and bold. It spends that almost two years in all new French oak. So this is a wine that uh, it's one of my favorites of ours. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. You know, just picture how this is going to be you know, five years down the line, 10 years, 20 years, because this is a really a wine that can go the distance. Um, and the tannins will just um, get smoother and velvety soft. Um, with the, the Trilogy is another one that'll age uh, really nicely. And the Napa Valley Cab, it's that introductory one. But you got the commonality of berries, um, chocolate, earthiness. I think the Holy Smoke has a little bit more uh, menthol, some dust, um, yeah. And the, the Holy Smoke is definitely uh, showing its characteristics of its vineyard. You know, it's a very specific single vineyard plot. Um, so that soil is giving certain flavor profiles that you're just not going to pick up in the other wines. Where the first one, the 2009 Cabernet Sauvignon, it's a blend of, you know, St. Helena, Rutherford, a little bit of Oakville, I believe. Um, so it's kind of creating the balances there. And of course, the trilogy being three different wines entirely. So those are your, your differences of the three different wines. All right, uh, what's the best temperature to serve Cabernet from Joe in Tampa? Thank you, Joe, that is a great question. And I'm actually gonna turn this question over to Sean, one of our panelists here, <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> I personally think wine temperature is subjective, but I know there are it's some ideal temperatures. <laughs> and recently I, I saw this, this absolutely crazy thermometer that put a different temperature on every varietal. And I, I took one look at this photo and I just went, I'm in the wine industry and this scares me. I couldn't imagine what somebody who's just getting into wine looking at this might have said. Oh, they're going to run for the hills. Oh my gosh. Like, I need I, one. I, 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 know I we're can't drink for my Chardonnay unless it's this temperature or my Cabernet. No. no. The, the, the easiest way that I like to basically balance my whites and my reds and you know, there's a few temperature, I mean, unless you're sitting there with a thermometer in your glass waiting. At the moment it hits your tongue. So, yeah, you're not gonna get there. So it's nothing to ever stress out about. Um, I personally really enjoy my red wines, Cabernet especially, just below room temperature. Now, what does that mean? Well, most rooms sit right at about 70 degrees. So if you can, within reason, get your, your wine just below that. Almost to the point that when you pick it up, it doesn't feel cold, but you actually might leave fingerprints on it. Right, uh, that's a subtle got, difference. It's a subtle difference, and it doesn't seem like that much, but on your palate and the way that your receptors go, it actually makes a huge difference in how you perceive the wines. You start letting wines warm up, sitting in the sun and getting too hot, it's, it's almost like you're over blooming a flower. Like you're actually right. removing too many petals because it's just exploded. So yeah, it's exploded. Whereas it's now, having it at that temperature, you just get to see the entirety of that. It kind of suspends it in that state for a little while longer. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. 
so basically what we're hearing is, you know, obviously there are quote unquote perfect temperatures for wines as you will find if you do a little Google search. And again, those are all the personal opinions of the people writing those articles. So as Sean, I think, put it very well, you know, little, little less than room temperature is going to open the wine beautifully. After that, find whatever your perfect temperature is and enjoy it. All right, our next question is, which Cabernet is your most popular here at Flora Springs from Laura in San Diego? And uh, well, you know what? I think that is a Richard question because he should know this one. Wow. <laughs> I'll tell you, Laura, that is a great question. I was in San Diego last Thursday hosting a wine dinner at uh, Proprietor's Reserve and Trilogy was a hit. Uh, so I, I would have to say a Trilogy is, uh, is our top wine, almost bar none. I want to jump back to the, the earlier question on uh, what is the difference in these three Cabernets. The entry level Cabernet we make about 4,500 cases of, Trilogy we make about 5,000 cases of, the, out of the, the, the Holy Smoke Vineyard we only make less than 400 cases of, so you're going to have bigger, bolder flavors maybe the, the lower you go, but uh, you know, Trilogy would definitely be uh, our, our top wine. Thank you so much. All right, so does the glass you serve a wine in really matter? This is coming from Angus in Sonoma. That is a great question. I know we hear that a lot. Uh, personally, I, I have enjoyed my wines from anything from a champagne flute to a mason jar. So uh, I may not be the perfect one to answer this question, uh, but let's see, who can answer this best? Uh, Matt has his opinion, I can see it. Uh, let's just take a little vote from the, the panel here. Uh, panel to the left, what do you think? Does, does a wine glass matter? Yes. Yes, yes. okay. Panel to the right? Yeah. Yes, okay. So then, Matt, maybe you can explain to us why the glassware matters. Uh, so when you're using the glassware, um, they'll have different shapes. <laughs> so for instance, uh, we've got our um, Riedel Venom Extremes here. Uh, they have a nice wide bowl, uh, and then they come up to the top and um, you can see they get narrower at the very top. Um, so that is going to help uh, when you're swirling the wine in the bottom, collect that uh, nose to it, uh, and then really um, concentrate it there uh, when you're smelling the wine. Uh, and also, uh, each glass is going to have um, a different shape to help bring out the flavors, and then also it will determine where it hits your tongue. So, you know, it's supposed to be each glass for a particular wine. Um, will help it uh, bring out the flavors. Uh, so you'd have a, a white glass, a red glass, yes. Bordeaux, a Pinot. The Pinot mm -hmm. ones um, are shorter and more narrow at the bottom. So, so we were just um, past another glass here. Mm -hmm. I don't know um, at home if you can see it. but So this one's a slightly different shape. But you can yeah. see it's definitely still more tapered here at the bottom mm -hmm. and it has that wide bowl. Sure. And then uh, there's a very subtle taper yeah. to the top, but not nearly as extreme as the Riedels that we're using here. Uh, it is also a Riedel, but it's a different style. So mm -hmm. what would you say this one is used for? I believe this is a Bordeaux Festival glass is the name of this one. Um, so it's uh, this one we use in the tasting room um, for our reds and our whites um, because it's pretty versatile. Uh, it's more shaped um, like a universal glass for reds and whites. It doesn't yeah. have quite as wide of a bowl at the bottom. So. Okay, great. So, uh, so basically... Yeah. Uh, pardon, yeah, I, think, I think another, maybe the basis of this question also is how much should we be spending on glassware uh, you know this, that's the thing is that at your home you think oh this is an amazing cabernet i don't want to waste it on my you know on my glassware that i right. have i need to go out and buy brand new glassware for it in order to be able to enjoy it so ultimately is it like do you have to have pristine glassware yeah what's the investment wine? level yeah exactly um, well, you know, I think, I mean, I know at our home we have various glassware, not always the right glassware, but we do have our larger wine glasses when we're dealing with our big reds, um, and then of course some smaller ones that we may either put our reds in, but mostly for our whites. And there are many options in glassware. You can, you know, take out a second mortgage and uh, do the whole collection. Or you could head over to you know your local Target or Crate and Barrel and pick up a few um, two different sizes and you'll probably serve just well. Uh, I do know I love sipping my bubbles from a flute no matter what. So you know your glassware is you know again it's your personal choice, but you'd probably be served very well if you just had a smaller white wine glass and a, and a red wine glass um, and then not worry about whether it's a Pinot glass or a Cabernet glass. So all right, have, go ahead. Question? I'm sorry. Sure. Have you also talked about uh, crystal versus glass? We have not really talked about crystal versus glass, but I think that's an excellent question, and uh, I don't know if we have enough time to get into that one today. 
<laughs> but uh, maybe another time we actually should do a crystal versus glass comparison. Everybody vote. Two thumbs way, way up. All right. I think that may be another uh, live uh, broadcast for us here. OK. so. Let's talk about our holy smoke pairing, which we actually skipped completely over. <laughs> so uh, that is a good question. What about that pairing? Um, so Marissa has uh, selected for us a wonderful uh, pairing, which could go either way. You could remove, um, we'll talk about it a little bit. It's a Machego uh, cheese, cheese plank, plank. <laughs> cheese plank with uh, prosciutto de prama and sun-dried tomato with a red pepper, what do we call this, relish. It's very, very beautiful. So everyone, ooh, ah, oh. And then drop your food on the, on the table. That's always classy. Uh, not recommended at a five-star restaurant, no. Uh, and if you just took off the, um, the prosciutto, this could also be a very easy vegetarian dish as well. So you'd be able to still pick up a lot of the flavor profiles. And ladies and gentlemen, on your marks, get set, go! Mm. <laughs> we are getting a lot of mmms going around the table right now. I have to say that was an excellent, excellent pairing. I mean, it just simmers the holy smoke way down because again it is a little bit young so you know the tannins are a little more apparent <laughs> than what we've had with the other two wines and i know at home if you're tasting with us you can definitely tell the difference and this this uh, flavor profile between the cheese and the prosciutto and the, and the tomato with the acidity and everything just just neutralize that like that and then you can really taste the fruit of the wine it's incredible yes i'm getting nods uh, <laughs> golf clap Thank you. There we, yes. <laughs> so uh, definitely cheers. Cheers to Marissa for a phenomenal pairing on this one. All right. OK, question coming from Saranac Lake, New York. We have, where can I buy the 2009 Holy Smoke in, let's say, New York? Well, you can buy it right here at the Flora Springs Tasty Room. Because uh, uh, you, you actually need to be part of uh, the wine club uh, to get the Holy Smoke. Uh, once again, it's a limited production. We have our wine club currently buying about 85% of all of our single vineyards. So uh, please contact the Flora Springs Tasting Room uh, as you, uh, it'd be uh, uh, tough to, to find those wines that in New York. Not that we don't want to sell them in New York, but once again, we're, we're very fortunate at Flora Springs to have a nice chef in Marisa Nix, but she's also our preferred palate ambassador. So she would be one. Uh, you could also contact you uh, for, for our, all of the single vineyard wine needs. So what we're hearing is membership has its privileges. So uh, definitely become a Flora Springs Wine Club member and you'll have access to Marissa here who uh, will help you with pairings as well as uh, any other possible questions around the food and wine uh, world. And of course you can call here to the tasting room and get your holy smoke. But uh, morning, it may be sold this, out. <laughs> yeah, these do sell out and uh, we've got 09s right now. Um, really because we have such small production, around 300, this one is 375. Right. They sell out, so that's why we're on 09s right now. I think ideally, if I was pouring them in the taste room, I wouldn't want to be pouring anything besides at least 08s you know, later because these wines will really develop over time. And I think another good point is um, we do uh, five total single vineyard caps. Oh, wow. Um, and so this is only one flavor profile of our vineyards from uh, the Orfo Crossroads. Um, we've got one just northeast of Napa. We have one in Pope Valley. We've got uh, one in Rutherford, one in St. Helena. Uh, and those are our two reserves. And those we really don't even, I mean, a Rutherford Hillside Reserve, we don't even have it retail. It's only through the club. So these are really special wines. Um, and it's really unique, too, that we have these appellations spread out large of the same production practices so you're getting a real taste of the terroir and the microclimate from each area so. incredible all right question coming in now from our online audience why do people swirl their wine from april and los angeles uh it is a good question it's not just a nervous habit although it can be uh, i do know uh, that swirling it does help the air get into the wine so it starts kind of releasing the nose as you may have uh, read online that there is such a thing called a nose it's not this nose it's the aroma of the wine but uh, Sean, what would you say the purpose of swirling is? Well, when I first got into wine, the winemaker I was working for uh, gave me a really bad joke that I stick with. And what you're doing is you're volatizing 
ethers or violating Esther, but I don't think she would like that. So we'll stick with the volatilizing ethers. And that's just a fancy way. I'll stick with the other one. I'll stick with the other one. <laughs> really, all you're doing is you're expanding the um, the surface area of the one. You're 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 stretching it out very very gently. And well, what does that do? Stretching it out. What it does is it actually allows oxygen molecules into that one. And those oxygen molecules are kind of like really good fingertips on a stiff muscle. And what they do is they get in there and they slowly kind of massage all the different parts of the wine apart. So and it's a spa day for the wine. It's just totally a spa That's day. That's awesome. Mud <laughs> bath. Oh, not quite. Anybody going up to Dr. Wilkinson's later? Yeah, we should all go. Yeah, absolutely. But it's really what it does. You just, you just really kind of letting the oxygen get in there and relax the wine. And as the wine relaxes, it's a lot more fun to enjoy and a lot more fun to have a chat with. And it's willing to tell you a little bit more. Well, <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. You want a relaxed wine, not a stressed out That's wine. Very well put, you know, from a very sharp guy. But you have to remember, folks, when uh, when we're making wine, you're, you're in a big barrel. So it's in a comfortable barrel. And then all of a sudden, we shove it into this bottle, put a cork in there. And it, all it wants to do is escape and get back to that barrel atmosphere again. So what you're trying to put it back in that barrel atmosphere. Nice. Like Sean mentioned that, adding you know, a lot of oxygen molecules and everything is, is happy again. In this so little natural exactly, environment. Very well put. Yeah, we all need a massage. Yes. yes. We, all we all need a massage. Well, cheers very to massages. Well. Yes. <laughs> Okay, question coming in again. Here we go. How can I find out about upcoming events? Well, that is a good question. I do know that you can go to the Flora Springs website and click on their events section, which has most of their events listed. You may also check out their uh, Facebook page and Twitter feeds. And of course, you can always call the winery and say, hey, what's going on? And uh, they will tell you if they have any special events. I know they have some amazing events. And if you haven't had a chance to partake in some of them, there's the Flora Springs date night and movies that they do uh, through the summer. The last one will be in October, and it's going to be a hoot. But um, you know, it gets a last lobster Saturday feed. Last Saturday of every month, through June, October. June through so, October. Uh, yes. Yes. So we got two more. Excellent. So they're and they're fun. amazing. You know, they do these mm, massive lobster feeds. There is no hunger going on here. And then you go upstairs and you relax in these cushy chairs and watch an incredible movie with your sweetheart. It is a wonderful evening and the out. And wine. Don't forget the wine. And the wine. Who <laughs> could forget the wine? We don't forget the wine. No, that's like the main star attraction for sure. Uh, there's lots of events that always go on at Flora Springs. So, you know, definitely check out their website and give them a call to hear what's going on and uh, keep uh, posted on all the new stuff that's going on around here. And, of course, what they're doing nationally as well, as Richard can attest to, you know, there's winemaker dinners and events and tastings going on all over this country. All right, from Abby in Salem, Massachusetts. Wow, cheers to that. Thanks for tuning cheers, in tonight. Abby. Yeah, right. wow. Good evening to you. So, will you be doing more of the hashtag varietal days in the future? And consensus in the back room? Yes. 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 So stay tuned for more whatever wine varietal day will be coming to a uh, TV or a screen near you very soon. And uh, there are more. We just did Cabernet Day. There's Sauvignon Blanc Day. There's you name it. There's a day for that. And uh, next we have what's the deal with the ghost wine I've heard about from Julia in Chicago. Ooh, who I wants to take the question? Richard, Matt, any, meeny, money, mo. Right. Well, it's uh, the vineyard taunted. Um, so you don't <laughs> age in the Indian burial ground. So you get great terroir in the. Wow, so, I like that story. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. I'm ready to buy it. I know. I'm like, sign me up. This is fantastic. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, so you might start getting visions. Uh, but uh, really, uh, a ghost winery is one that was uh, a vineyard that was around before Prohibition um, shut down and then it came back afterwards. So there's a limited amount that uh, were around before Prohibition a long time ago. And uh, part of our property happens to be uh, ghost winery vineyards. And so we've done, this will be the third year, uh, we choose a specific varietal from our ghost winery vineyards. Uh, this year it happens to be our 100% Syrah 2011. 
Uh, and the labels are really unique. These are released um, October 31st, Halloween. You may be able to get a pre-release if you give us a call uh, or check out our website. Um, so what we've got uh, uh, is a, a really unique label. Um, the artist is Wes Freed, so he, uh, he'd be known for uh, Grateful Dead album covers. So oh, that looks so familiar. That's where yeah, it's from. So Excellent. Cool. So it's going to be a different aspect of our, um, our state property. Uh, and so this mm -hmm. year, uh, it's a little bit of a, a headless horseman motif. So right. it's very cool. And we even have coffin boxes for your um, Serra to go into. So well, that is very cool. Yeah. So back to that question about events. This will be at the October date night, correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. So uh, if so, you want to so come join us, that is going to be the night to ch try this wine so, and yeah. come in costume. Yeah. It's going to be a festive, fun night for sure. Yeah. OK, question coming from uh, yes. Jenna Beatty, when is the best time to visit the room? Well, of course, any time, silly. But, uh, you know, when you're here, that's the best time to visit the room. I know the room is open seven days a week. Uh, don't come after 5 o'clock? Yeah. Yeah, usually they're closed at 5. So anytime before then, 10 to 5, might be a good time to visit the room. Uh, or you can call, and we have bigger spaces as well here. So if you want to do a private group or anything like that, they have the upstairs tasting lounge. It's you know, one cozy. great way, go to Cellar Pass. Book your reservation. All right, shameless <laughs> plug over here coming from Matt. Plug. Thank you, Matt. Yes, yeah, so you can always go to Seller Pass, uh, and that will help you know what the schedule is and see if they're booked or overbooked. And of course, all the different options that they have here. So they have food pairings. You have the upstairs rooftop lounge. You have all these really great groovy little private rooms um, inside the tasting room. So you know, definitely, it's worth checking out for sure. All right. Wow, I love all the questions. I'm loving these hand in the way Cabernets. <laughs> I'm curious that other wine about the other wines you make from Matt in Sioux City, Iowa. Well, who wants to take this one? Well, you know, first of all, I, I just want to say hi to Matt in Sioux City, Iowa. I've, uh, I manage uh, the country for Florida Springs, and so I've done some fun wine dinners at uh, Des Moines Country Club, uh, Cedar Rapids, uh, Iowa City. So you folks in Iowa, we're always cheering you on here in Napa Valley. We'd love for you to come out here and visit when you do. Uh, the other wines that we make, we were, uh, we were known uh, strictly for Chardonnay in the late 70s and early 80s. So we make a fabulous barrel fermented Chardonnay. Once again, kind of a limited production, uh, less than a thousand cases. Uh, our Sauvignon Blanc is another limited production, less than a thousand cases. But these are wines that garner national awards every single year. So they sell out fairly quick and the prices aren't astronomical. So once again, uh, the best way to get these uh, these core wines, as we like to say, and even the single vineyards, is to contact uh, the Florida Springs Tasting Room. Marisa Nix, our uh, preferred palate ambassador, uh, because they, they sell out every single year. So right now we're actually waiting to bottle our 2010 Napa Cabernet because of, of the, the excitement and the vintage and in the wine. So uh, once again, Sioux City, good to see you. Well, thank you so much. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> Let's, More say, plugs Let's hear it for Iowa. Yay, Iowa. Woo! Yay. All right. Okay, so coming out of Green Bay, Jenna and Green Bay, I'd like to know everyone's favorite of these three wines tasted tonight. So we're going to go from left to right, all the way at the end. And you got to speak really, really loud. And what was your favorite? And what's your name? Uh, I'm Bob. Hi, Bob. Mine was the Holy Smoke. All right, we got to vote for Holy Smoke. I second that. I'm Mark. Hi, and Mark. I also tended to gravitate toward the 100% Cabernet Holy Smoke. Excellent. It's two for Holy Smoke. Yeah. My name is Trisha, and I actually had a tie between the Trilogy and the Holy Smoke because they're very different and a lot of different flavors and different purposes. And I see all three of your glasses are empty, so that had to be a very tough decision. She's high. Where's my wine? Moving on to Kathy, <laughs> who also had a difficult time deciding which her favorite was. What, what would you have to say if you had to pick one right now? I had to go back to the Trilogy with the rest of my desserts, so I will pick that one. All right, Ooh. Trilogy it is. Trilogy all the way. All right, another Trilogy, Matt? Uh, trilogy is so smooth and tasty, but I love the Holy Smoke, uh, so it's got to be my pick. All right, Holy Smoke. Okay, now for me. 
Well, this is really tough because I really did love the 2009 Cabernet. I know it's entry level, whatever, but I just thought it was such a well-rounded wine. But the Holy Smoke did intrigue me uh, beyond belief, and I'm very curious to see how this wine is going to develop over the years. So I'm going to also vote for Holy Smoke. Richard. You know, I, I have to say, Trilogy, I just want to give a shout out to Jenna in Green Bay. One of your great restaurants right there is Hinterland, and also visited Favre's and hosted a wine dinner just a little further south in uh, Appleton at uh, the season. So, Wisconsin in the house. <laughs> yep. And the Packers. Um, can Go Packers. <laughs> can, can I pick the Sauvignon Blanc that we started? Oh, no. <laughs> but it is incredible. It is, it is so good. And it's just something that we all got to taste. Uh, you know, I know it's Cabernet Day, but it was so good. We'll, we'll have to do a Sauvignon but Blanc actually, day for sure. Um, <laughs> actually, Sarah, I am completely with you on the entry level Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah. Um, it is so balanced. It has got such great fruit characteristics. It's so vari varietally. Said that right. Please, it's just it's for people who are just getting into wine and who might be a little nervous about jumping into the trilogy. Oh no, it's fantastic. Going massive into the the Holy Spirit. This Cabernet is just beautiful. It's, it's a perfect example that you do not need to spend $100 for a great Cabernet Sauvignon. Exactly I mean, it's, right. it's perfect well in, in itself. And, uh, and like I said, there's no, no wonder it's sold out so quickly. But, um, and of course, you can get the same quality in that 375 and just get two, one for each hand. It's perfect. <laughs> Marisa? Well, I definitely agree with you both uh, about, the, about the Napa Valley Cabernet. I think that for $40, it's just the most beautiful Cabernet I've tasted in a while. Um, although the trilogy pairs perfectly with the dessert and then also the Holy Smoke. I have to say, being the preferred palate's ambassador and holding these single vineyards like they're my own children, uh, they are the most pronounced and distinguished and uh, well-spoken wines that I've ever tasted. And so therefore, I am privileged to be taking care of these wines and they are opening very nicely right now yet again there's something that you can sell her for many many years to come so that's what I think adds exceptional value to these wines all right but the million dollar question is your what was your favorite I'd have to go with my holy smoke mm -hmm. all right I'd have to go with it. Yeah, that's all right I'm going to holy smoke as well I'm a big Oak Hill fan mm -hmm. it's it's just my my preferred neck of the woods for Napa. It's it's what I lean towards every time. So. And what's your name? When you're Billy. Billy. Nice to meet you, Billy. Hi, I'm Billy. And you're Sarah, right? I'm Sarah. Excellent. Yeah. And I, I have to say, trilogy was my favorite, but I admit it may have been swayed by the flowers. Chocolate. <laughs> 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 Sarah, what's your favorite? Yeah, I think that's a tough one. Um, you know, I think the Holy Smoke is the most pronounced of the three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think that the Holy Smoke is the most pronounced of the three. What I'm surprised to find my taste not changing, <laughs> even with the presence of such gracious wines, but I still prefer the trilogy over the rest. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, the uh, general consensus is all the way across this entire table, which we now have a hand I, down here. I Mark. just had a quick question. When she started talking about um, the wines can age, so specifically Cabernet is one of those grapes, right, since it has a significant amount of tannins to it, et cetera, right. it ages very beautifully. So what would potentially happen with these wines as they age? Can we talk a little Ooh, bit about that? We should so talk about the that. Holy Smoke, since you know that was our favorite even right now. Right, what's it gonna so be in five years? Exactly. I mean exactly if exactly. I want to put it away for five years, what's gonna happen to the wine and what might I experience then? You know? Well Matt, I think you are probably the best to answer this question. We were kinda of talking about this yesterday on the ageability, um, also how you were saying how you would be wanting to pour the two thousand eights Mm -hmm. most likely for the Holy Smoke specifically. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about the ageability and what you can expect sure. out of these wines. Especially if we're waiting that long, you know, to, to drink the On wine. On pins and needles, and exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's right. Uh, having had some of the older wines, um, the tannins, which are more pronounced in this, um, they start to get really soft and supple, almost velvety soft uh, mouthfeel, which is just awesome in a wine. Uh, and then you get to just these super long finishes um, so you finish tasting the wine, but it just remains. 
Uh, and you get some more of the secondary flavors, some more, uh, less of the fruit forward and more earthiness. You get some um, savory notes like mushroom. You might get a little bit of leather, some oak. So it just becomes more complex uh, and then the flavors also integrate more as well. I mean, Richard, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, you know what? I just want to answer the question down there really quick. That's a great question. Yeah. And we have the perfect answer for that because Marissa and I, we just had some preferred wine palette uh, club members coming up and they wanted to taste some older vintages. So Ooh, excellent. 2001, 2002, holy smoke. And where was my invitation? Uh, yes, yeah, right. well, yeah, what? Yeah, so Marissa, and I, <laughs> Marissa was, going, was doing a little food wine pairing. So we tasted the 01 and 02 and we were both pleasantly shocked at the tannins had it integrated and drew out more darker berry flavors and the tannin structure was still there and so we even wrote we we wrote our private notes and then we compared them with our winemaker and you know we were still talking maybe another three or four more years so wow. at the winery yeah at the winery we like to say you know we it, it, it's all a, a personal flavor. I like jamming this still in my older wine. So I'm drinking wines not past maybe 10 years, uh, seven to 10 years on the holy smoke. But as far as, uh, uh, you know, a, a collector, he, these wines are still going to, you know, maybe another 12 to 15. Absolutely. So uh, 12 to 15 on yeah. these. Absolutely. So yeah. I, I'm hearing we should have a library wine day. Well, we, we do every, uh, oh. for the preferred palate members, every event that we have, we are now releasing library wines for your tasting pleasure. Um, and we're also going to be releasing, there's only a limited amount per vintage, but we will be uh, for, for a little additional cost because of our cellaring process. Um, there are, they are available to those that are curious. And so you, you're very welcome to contact me for any of your vintage library needs. Oh, I highly recommend that you do. I, I'm, I actually want to do this for sure. I'm, yeah. I'm very excited, yeah. so we have to do this. But um, Yeah, we did a special mm -hmm. VIP tasting today in our uh, VIP lounge, and so we did our Appalachians tasting, some of our whites, uh, but then we pulled out an O2 trilogy. Awesome. It's still, uh, you could still set that down for even longer. And it's 10 years. It's been 10 years. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, but it was so good. I mean, the spices, the smoothness of the mouthfeel, uh, and then just the savory and red fruit characters in it. So... Yeah. And, you know, and that's one of the great things about a winery that has been around for so long is that you can actually go back to these older vintages and really see how they're going to age over time. I know there's new brands springing up all the time and Flora Springs, you know, it, you know, hundred years, you know, for Flora and, you know, just the winery in general has been around. You've got these amazing consistencies of the wine styles and uh, just a history of wine. So, you know, I, I have to say, you know, you get my vote a hundred percent, you know, come here, visit the winery, taste what's new released, join the club and taste the library vintages. You cannot go wrong. One quick little thing I, I, I will tell everybody, if um, you're asking for uh, the wine glasses and what's going on, the vintage and all these fun questions we're getting in, pick up this month's issue of the American Vineyard. Oh, okay. Flora Springs is featured on the cover. Excellent. As Grape Grower of the Year. Oh, incredible. So whether you're in Sioux City, you're in uh, Green Bay or Massachusetts. You, or right you, here in Napa Valley. Or right here in Napa Valley, the American Vineyard, and there's a beautiful synopsis on what it, the criteria, what it took for a winery to get Grape Grower of the Year. And a lot Amazing. of it plays into all the questions we had today. So it's a, it's a really informative, but kind of a blue collar, fun way, how we are here at Flora Springs on, you know, what we're doing and how we're trying Just to down get to better. Earth. Down to earth. We literally. love it, literally, no literally. pun intended. <laughs> Well, I want to give a very warm Flora Springs thank you to everyone who joined us today and tasting these amazing wines. I know most of you had the wines today. I know some of you are just tuning in. So please make a beeline, come down here. You got to try these. But thank you again for joining us for the third annual Cabernet Day celebration. And we look forward to seeing you again very soon for our next whatever wine day it may be. Talk to you soon. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah.